Hello there and welcome back to the Closet Historian and back to my sewing room for another demonstration. Today I wanted to go ahead and show you how I make these sweetheart necklines where there's a little bit of a yoke separated and then there's gathering up into the yoke area. This is actually a very simple modification, something I've used to make several dresses in the past and something that is very common in 1930s, 40s, and 50s patterns. Um, you can find examples of this throughout the mid-century sort of era, so I thought it would be a good style to demonstrate for you. Let's jump on over to the blue patterning table of doom and get started. As usual, I will be starting with my basic block front and back here, my most basic bodice pattern. Set a timer on my phone here so I know when the camera's gonna turn off on me. But I'm going to go ahead and make a two-sided mock-up today so I can show you two different variations of this neckline style, something a little bit more curvy and then something a little bit more um, geometric or like straight across, I suppose. So I'm going to trace a copy of my bodice front here with its two darts and I'm just gonna transfer those darts and the apex and all relevant information over onto this paper copy here. All right, so this is normally cut on the fold, but I'm going to go ahead and add a center front seam just because I'm going to be sewing two different <laughs> versions of this mock-up or two different different versions of this style together uh, today. So normally you can cut this on the fold, <clears throat> but uh, you can also add a center front seam if you want to. I'm just going to go ahead and draw in this curved yoke up here at the top, like so, sort of shape I want up here from the neckline out to the arm side. And then I will draw in the neckline as well. I'm just kind of drawing a curve trying to keep in mind where my apex is, knowing that that's the center of the bust and trying to decide how deep I want my neckline to be. Now this side dart here, I'm going to separate into two uh, darts up into this yoke here instead. So I will eventually be closing this side dart and opening it up up there. Of course, dart manipulation is something you see me do all the time here on the channel and I can link you to my darts video in the cards above as well. I will go ahead and cut this out here real fast, sped up. And uh, before I can move these darts, I have to go ahead and separate off the yoke. But of course, before I did that, I should have marked up here where that needs to be gathered back down into um, later. So make sure you mark this point here, preferably before you cut it off, but you know, or after like this, if you forget. And before I forget to add seam allowance, as I always say, I will go ahead and add that on now because anytime I cut the pattern apart where I plan to sew it back together, I need to add some, some uh, seam allowance. So that is what I will do here with my trusty burgundy Sharpie, like so. And I will need to add seam allowance to this as well. You can add seam allowance exact, uh, like just where that sews back on or all the way along the whole thing. If you, depending on how you plan on finishing this neckline or lining this a bodice like this, you have to make some decisions on that kind of thing. I'm just gonna add seam allowance all the way along here. Normally I would do, let's say, you could face this whole thing in one, but I would do a little facing for the lower portion of the bodice and then fully line this up shoulder, this uh, yoke shoulder piece, personally, if it were me. So I can go ahead and close this side dart here and open it up into the shoulder instead like so technically it's still the shoulder even though it's just going up into a yoke now and uh it's nice to separate that into two um, or more darts if for like totally even spacing i usually just do two one is fine as well it'll, it'll be okay but i don't know best practice i think is to separate it like so again i'm not measuring that i'm just taping it down doing it by eye and then I'm just going to smooth off this area here. I do end up taking a little tiny tip of like original pattern off doing this, but it's just more important that this is a smooth-ish line that we can use to gather down into our shoulder yoke in a moment. So this will be gathered down and it will create the cone of the bust still. Of course, you could use this waist dart and put that up there as well too, if you wanted more gathering up there and to eliminate the darts in the front completely. But this is version one, let's set that aside. My voice is not functioning today. Okay, so for the other side of the bodice, I'm gonna show you I don't know, another style variation. It's the exact same process, just another design choice option, I suppose. There are many, many options when it comes to something like this. You can do different shapes. You can put darts up into the yoke instead. You can leave them as darts. You can use it as gathering. You can make them pleats or tucks instead if you so desire. But here I'm going to go ahead and just do that same yoke, sweetheart neckline, but instead of doing curvy yokes, I'm going to go ahead and do straight across. So here's the drawing a little shoulder yoke in. I'm gonna make sure that the neckline is the same depth because I'm going to be making this into one mock-up despite it being two different styles. And again, I'm going to need to add seam allowance along the center front so I can sew them together. But once again, I'm just going to draw lines up into that yoke where I'm going to move my side dart fullness. And again, you could move the waist dart up there instead or also, um, it's up to you if you want to keep the other darts, if you want to split them in, like what you want to do with the other dart fullness is up to you. But you can put it all up here if you want, if you should so desire. But of course I have a lot of dart fullness, so I like to keep some of it in a dart because uh, if I put it all into gathering, it ends up being a bit poofy, honestly, just because I have plenty of difference between my bust and waist measurement, which means I have large darts. If you don't have a huge difference between your 
um, like larger measurement and smaller measurement on the bodice or the skirt, honestly. You can always get around that by adding more fullness in different ways. Um, so I will try and show that more in the future. For example, here, if I split from these darts all the way through the apex into the waist and then just like flare the top of this more, you can add in more fullness that is not a uh, fullness related to the fit of the garment, but it's just fullness added for style reasons. Um, that is something that you can do. I will link to a little drawing I did on Pinterest for once, <laughs> once for someone explaining how this is done. And hopefully it'll give you an idea of what I mean by just being able to flare the pattern out more, um, not because of dart fullness, like fit fullness, but because you just want more gathering. So hopefully that will be slightly illustra illustrative for those of you who understand what the heck I'm talking about. But once again, this is all just gonna get gathered down into my yoke. We have our darts here and we have moved them into gathering up here into this yoke again. You could use this waist start to have more gathering up there if you would like, which is what past me is trying to tell you here. But I have a pattern, two different versions of this pattern, the curvy side and the straight across side. And I will go ahead and cut those out of a single layer of muslin each so that I can put together a little mock-up for you showing what these look like on the body and showing you a little bit about how this goes together when it comes to sewing these things. I'm gonna take my patterns off here. Now I'm going to need to gather all this down so that it fits back into the yoke. And then I will go ahead and just transfer my dart markings for the waist dart because I'll just be keeping these waist darts for now. You could also use this waist dart as gathering as well. I've seen that a lot in 1940s patterns, especially where the fullness at the waist is gathered as well as the fullness up into the yoke. Same here for the other side. Just need to mark where that gather needs to go. It's gonna fit back down into our yoke. And again, I will mark my waist dart so I can sew that as well. Version two, I forgot to mark this. You, you know. Just mark my darts onto this mock-up fabric here. Not caring that I'm using marker, of course. <laughs> you know, don't use marker on your nice fabrics. I'm going to transfer the mark here so I know what I need to gather the rest of my bodice down into on that particular yoke. For this side, I'm just going to do two lines of gathering stitching across the top here. I just use this machine basting on my machine. You could gather things by hand if you wanted to. Um, I always recommend two lines of gathering stitching in case one breaks on you and it just makes it easier and smoother to do so. So I have my little yoke pattern here, make sure I'm not getting lost. And I will gather this down and fit this down into the yoke. And then I will tie my gathering off once it's the right size and then I'll space out my gathers so that they are evenly dispersed across this seam because it'll just give a nicer finish in the end. Of course, if you wanted to concentrate gathering like in the center of this or to the side or to the neckline, you could. It's all up to you. It's a lot of design decisions, you know, that you can make. Um, you have freedom to make whatever you want when it comes to pattern drafting. That's kind of the nice thing, yeah? But that's gonna get sewn on here. So I'll sew that on with half inch seam allowance. Same for this version here, version one here with the curvy yoke. Um, the only difference is here that the yoke encompasses part of the neckline or more of the neckline, I suppose. So once again, I'm gonna tie off my gathering thread and then I'm going to gather all this down into this smaller section here. I'm just gonna pin this here so I know how much to gather this down. So I will scooch this fabric along space my gathers out and pin this into place. Move those gathers along, just evenly space them so we can get an idea of what this would look like. Um, here is the dress, by the way, where I use this sort of technique to create the bodice. I quite like this dress. I haven't been able to wear it for a while just because I don't get to leave the house much anymore. So, uh, you know, wearing of all the summer dresses doesn't get done. But here, once that's sewn, you can go ahead and just press those. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, you can press these, uh, the gathering or the seam of this, either up or down. Down, it kind of helps floof out the gathers and up, it'll keep things nice and smooth and you can do some top stitching on that too or under stitching if you would like to. But then I sewed my center fronts together here and you can uh, kind of, again, uh, fully line this kind of stuff or you can go ahead and use facings to finish these necklines or you can use bias tape, uh, very various different ways to finish necklines like this. But I'm just gonna go ahead and throw some backs onto here so I can try this mock-up on for you so you can see what each of these variations look like on a person, this particular person, me, that's right. And here is that. So we have version one over here with the curved yoke and then the straight across yoke on the other side, version two. So you can of course combine these and have a curved yoke with a straight across neckline. You can change the neckline to be V'd. You can change the neckline to be square or round. You can do whatever shape you would like, but this is how you separate off little yokes at the shoulder and put the fullness of the darts up into that area if you should so desire to create this gathered effect. I hope this video was helpful for any of you who are considering a neckline like this in your next project. Thank you as always for watching today and I will see you again here real soon. Bye.